G'day everybody. So the time has come for me to rebuild one of these little motors. So this video is gonna be about tearing it down and getting it prepped for that. So yeah, here we have an eight horsepower Mercury. Here we have a 9.8 horsepower Tahatsu. Um, both these motors are very similar. The Mercury is actually built by Tahatsu. So the six, the eight, the six, eight, and 9.8 Tahatsu, they all have the same block, um, same leg, same gear case, uh, just a few little different parts in them. So yeah, if you own any of those, this video is gonna be very relevant for you guys. Um, so anyway, let's get into the teardown and um, yeah, video after this will obviously be the rebuild. All right, cheers guys. Okay, let's have a look at this thing. Here you goes. All right, so this is exactly how I bought the motor. All these head bolts were snapped, the head was off, and you can see that the aluminium around the bore here has corroded and started to delaminate on this top cylinder. Um, and I think what's caused that is, I don't reckon the um, head bolts were re-torqued after the yeah, appropriate time when it was new. Um, had this little tub here. The head itself looks like it's in good condition, but the head gasket, as can be expected, right there, is all blown out and ruined. So this is a motor that has been an auxiliary on a boat and really hasn't done any work. So yeah, it's a bit of a shame. That means this block is actually rubbish. I can't yeah do much to repair that properly. So I'll be using a new block and hoping that the crank and all the other bits are okay. Before you start pulling a motor apart, it is very important to take yeah, pictures of everything, each side, um, so you know, yeah, basically how everything is supposed to look when you put it back together. So yeah, take, take some quick pictures of each side and the front, and save them on your camera so that you know, yeah, how it all goes back together. All right, let's start pulling this down. Okay, so we will start with removing the pull start assembly. So we just need to remove this linkage Open that up, pull that off, and then I just have three 10 millimeter bolts to undo. Now I'm going to remove the carburetor. So we have a few linkages here to disconnect. One is the choke. So you just push that little clip off, roll that sideways. So now the, the choke's disassembled. And then we have the linkage for throttle there. And then I have these two bolts and just the fuel line to disconnect. The fuel line I remove off the fuel pump here right now. Try and pry the fuel line off from the base. Don't just pull it. You can actually yeah, break the, the nipple on the fuel pump. And then we just have these two 10 millimeter bolts again. And then that's it. Carb is off. And I'll keep the gasket with it as well. Awesome. Another thing I like to do before I remove the power head from the leg is to loosen the flywheel bolt and see if I can, yeah, remove this a bit because it's way easier with the power head held in the leg, trying to get this off, than yeah, if it's just on a bench. So I will undo this nut. I'm just trying to hold the flywheel a little bit and just tap this to undo it. You do need to make sure that you do have a left-handed or right-handed thread for your flywheel bolt. I know this one's left. All right, so that's undone. So with these smaller motors, often you can just undo this nut so that it is above the bolt so that if you tap it, you're not gonna damage the end of the actual crank. And then I'll pull this upwards 
with some force and give that a tap with a hammer. And often these yeah, little flywheels just pop off. So I'll give that a go. All right, can't really get my hammer head down inside there in between the uh, other three bolts. So I'm gonna yeah, use a little solid punch there and see if that helps. Feels like it's come. All right. And don't lose your, um, yeah, crank key there, your flywheel key. That one there. Awesome. I might actually remove the stator now as well. So let's pop this off. So I've got a series of Phillips screws to undo to take this stator off again it's just easier to take this stuff off whilst the whole power head is supported on the leg all right so that's free i'll go and undo all of the wires now so you can see these are all color coded so it's going to be pretty easy to reconnect them once it's rebuilt Awesome. Now I'm just going to loosen off these throttle linkages. Pop them out. I should be able to, yeah, feed them out of this little cam. There's one. There's two. All right. Now I'm ready to take the yeah, power head bolts off from underneath and then pull this whole power head off the leg. Okay, so the power head bolts on this one, there is six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'll take them out now. Okay, now those power head bolts are out, the power head shot pull off. Sometimes the um, gasket underneath the motors is quite stuck, so the rubber mallet sometimes to help it off is the go. head so it's important as things come apart just to yeah, put them I like to put them into Ziploc bags so that's the stator and all of the, the stator screws so all of that goes into a Ziploc bag there we go and I know that yeah that's my stator and the yeah, associated fixings um, again with yeah anything you're pulling off um, keep the bolts and the part sort of all together so I also like to um, yeah sometimes keep the bolts in the actual component and just tape blue tape the the bolt on so yeah I know exactly what bolt was from where so I've just gone and undone all of the exhaust cover bolts here um, to have to often give little places to lever yeah these plates off with often they don't work because the gaskets are so stuck, but we'll give it a go. Yep. Awesome. Looks pretty clean. So I still need to separate those two later. Okay, we'll go ahead and remove the reed plate cover here so that we can get to the um, yeah, crankcase half bolts. Okay, so I should be able to take this reed cover plate off. That all looks very good. And 
now I can get to all of the uh, crankcase half bolts. So I'll take them out now too. Okay, so again, they've got little lever points on this block to separate the crankcase halves. Okay, you do need to be particularly careful not to damage the mating surfaces of yeah, these two faces when you're yeah, keeping a block um, because yeah, they are very important. They're machined to suit each other. Um, I can already see that I'm not gonna be happy with this crank, I don't think. It's definitely had some um, yeah, salt and rust in here, but yeah, I'll pull the crankcase assembly out and we'll have a look. So we know the block's garbage, but this stuff here. Yeah, I can see in there that there's there's rust in that bearing. So I'm not yeah, really that happy with that. There's rust in the back of that small end bearing. So luckily I do have another crank. Um, these pistons will probably clean up okay. Anyway, yeah, so that that unfortunately is garbage. All right, so the tear down is complete on this little motor. As you can see, very easy to make sense of what's going on here. Um, everything's in their bags. So um, any bolts that could be taped to the components um, have been. So yeah, this bolt with the little, you know, cable lug on it, that's back in the same spot and it will make sense once it all goes back together. Um, yeah, so anyway, very, very important to, yeah, keep a close eye on your parts name them, take pictures of each side of your motor before you start disassembling, so you know where everything goes. Anyway. All right, hopefully you guys have enjoyed and got something out of this teardown video. I will be doing a rebuild video on this motor in the future, so if that's something you guys are interested in, subscribe for that. I'll do that once I get um, yeah, all the parts I need together and yeah, the new bits I'm gonna need to order. All the best, cheers.